Super. So good morning to all of you. And uh, so let's start this second session or the second webinar of the China Venture edition. And uh, thank you to all of you who had attended the webinar last time, which was a couple of weeks ago. And uh, it was an overwhelming response that we received to that webinar. Uh, the questions, the queries, the interest generated during the webinar and after it uh, through emails and the questions that we received were really, really good. So uh, keep posting, keep reaching out to us and uh, we will continue to share the insights around this topic. Um, so let me introduce the panelist again for the webinar. So we have Shivani and we have Anubrita, just like last time. Our uh, experts are linguists in the Chinese language and uh, they have been spending quite some time uh, in you know, learning this language and also teaching it to, to other people. So they come with a lot of experience and they have, uh, you know, raised the bar for the Chinese language industry in India uh, to a next level. Uh, there's one very interesting surprise for all of you who are attending the session today, uh, but that surprise will be opened up towards the end of this webinar and you will have to attend the entire webinar but you i can assure you that it is going to be worth the wait and worth uh, your entire patience that you put in to uh, go through the webinar uh, and stick with us uh, you will be uh, treated to something really really nice so without further ado i'm going to hand it over to anuprita and shivani to take it over and uh, enlighten us Over to you, ladies. Yes, Shivani. Uh, Shivani. Yeah. Am I not audible? Am I audible? Yes, yes am I audible? Okay, okay. All right. So I'm sorry for the glitch. The power just went out here. So I'll start again. So again, a very good morning to everyone. Welcome to the second webinar of the China Venture series. Uh, in the previous webinar, we had discussed about uh, what China is exactly and what we know about it. Uh, we had talked about its language, which is Chinese or Mandarin, and we had talked about why learning Chinese is important today. We had talked about the demand for Chinese learners uh, in the language industry today. And we had also explored the opportunities that Chinese learners can get uh, by learning Chinese and what the current trends in learning Chinese are. We had also taken a little bit of a sneak peek into uh, what Rian does as a language uh, technology company. So for today's webinar, we will take a look at the translation in industry in uh, not just it's not limited to uh, any country or any region. It obviously the translation industry is existent everywhere. So as the title suggested, we are going to delve deeper into translation and we are taking a look at the translation industry and exploring avenues around it. Uh, so we will begin with uh, taking a look at what translation exactly is we because we have an idea of what translation is, but I'm sure you don't know exactly what translation is correct. Uh, so we will talk about that. Uh, we will take a look at what the areas uh, for translation are available today, what avenues are available for translation. Uh, we will see the certain nuances of Chinese language. So nuances are small points that are there in every language and that make the language unique and different, right? These exist in all languages. So translators, when translating content, need to pay attention, extra attention to these nuances in the languages because uh, a difference in translation can make a huge difference and it can lead to miscommunication, right? Then we will talk about types of translations. I'm sure uh, a lot of you might not know that there are also types of translations, right? So we will take a look at that. We will see what machine translation and post editing MTPE is. 
and we'll also look at what the advantage of human intervention in the translation industry uh, is and why it is important. At the end of the video, uh, at, at the end of the uh, presentation, we will also take a look at uh, what Rian is. So Rian is a CAT tool that is used to enhance translations, right? We will watch a short video that will explain uh, the working of the Rian software. And we will conclude the presentation with uh, a few post presentation takeaways. So before we go into the areas of translation, let me ask you, what is translation? Think about it. I'm sure you have heard the word translation and you might have an idea of what it is. And you might be, I know what you're thinking. One word and you say it in another language and that is translation. Right, but I'm here to tell you that it's not just that it is that yes, but it's not just that it's much more than that. So is translation just a mere photocopy of the original content? Definitely not. I would say translation is art. Translation is a creative and a dynamic act. Why is that? Because translation is not merely saying a word or a sentence in another language. It is about conveying the exact message that the original content wants to convey, right? So when you see different translations of the same content, you will see that there are differences in each translation because the translation can end up being correct or incorrect based on who is translating it and who is interpreting it, right? So there can be differences in translation of the same text done by different translators, right? So translation again is what it is uh, saying or expressing the same content, be it a word, a sentence, a video or a document, anything, expressing the exact same message in another language. The key here being, that the message should not be affected. You express the message in another language, but the message has to stay the same. That is why I say translation is a creative act. It uh, translators play a huge role in correctly translating uh, any content, right? So therefore, a good translator needs to master two languages or more, right? So if I'm translating from English to Chinese, I need to have proper knowledge of English and Chinese because I need to understand what the content that has to be translated is, what message it wants to convey, and I have to convey that exact same message in another language, right? So translation, therefore, is an act that uh, requires mastery of two languages. Uh, it requires knowledge of social, cultural, political, or any other context. Uh, of the two languages involved. It also requires a creativity and expression. So just merely translating is not enough. Translating it using a good level of language is very important. And the key again being the message not being affected, right? So these are the main points that are included in a good translation, right? So if one does decide to become a translator, what areas are available or what avenues can you explore? So I have listed down three primary areas that require translations on a huge uh, scale and on a regular basis. So what are these three areas? As you can see on your screen, uh, it is documents, videos, and voice -overs. So when I talk about documents, what are documents? Documents are written, printed, or electronic matters that serve as official records, right? So we are surrounded by documents. Documents are an integral part of our life, right from the time we are born till the very end. We need to have everything documented and there needs to be an official record of any activity that happens in our life, correct? So it is very important to correctly translate documents to avoid misunderstandings, misinterpretation, or mis miscommunication. So what type of uh, documents am I talking about? I have listed a few, but there are a lot more documents or a lot more areas for document translation. 
uh, to give you a few examples. Uh, let's start with legal documents. OK, legal documents include uh, non disclosure agreements. It includes uh, contracts. It includes mergers or acquisitions. So anybody who wants to do business in China or wants to analyze policies of China or be it anything, you need to have sound knowledge of the legal uh, legal points that you need to consider, right? So translating legal documents therefore becomes uh, very important. Uh, then we have uh, business documents. Business documents can include uh, business reports. It can include uh, financial statements. So as you know, business is booming in China, right? Be it India China bilateral trade or be it business of China with any other country. So when somebody wants to do business with China or in China, having your financial statements uh, translated is a very important part of how you will do in uh, as a business in that country. Correct. So translating business documents therefore becomes very important. Then we have uh, technical documents. Technical documents can include uh, patents, uh, product specifications, user manuals, right? So as you know, the manufacturing sector in China is uh, huge. It is booming, right? So there are a lot of instances when businessmen from uh, India buy machines from China uh, and these machines then come to India for installation. So giving you a personal example, I had been an interpreter on one such an uh, one such assignment where uh, a Chinese company had sent its machines here for installation. So the machines when they come, they come with two of their engineers, right? And obviously if these engineers are from China, they don't speak our language. They speak only Chinese and along with them, along with them, they bring the user manuals, they bring the product specifications. They use any other uh, documents that the machine might require, but all of these documents are in Chinese, right? So for a factory worker in India to understand these documents or even to understand what is written on the machine, you need to have this content translated to better uh, convey what the sender or the uh, uh, sender of the message or sender of the product wants to convey to you, right? Then we have uh, medical documents. So no need to stress here that medical documents, translating medical documents correctly is extremely important because a slight miscommunication in medical documents can have uh, adverse effects, right? So. Medical documents can include your patient records. It can include your medical reports, anything. So if you are in any other country and you need medical assistance, if you have your uh, medical documents translated, it makes it much easier and quicker to get medical help. Then we have academic documents, which includes uh, your academic transcripts or uh, research papers or theses. Right. So if you want to study in China or in any other country, your academic transcript transcripts needs need to be translated in that language. Or if you are looking to go to China to do research, you need to have your thesis prepared in both languages. And if you're going there, you also need to present it in the local language. So that is where translation of your academic documents becomes very important. Then we have government documents which are uh, policies, government policies. It can be about anything, government regulations. So if you are in any country and be it for tourism purposes or for business purposes or any other purpose, you need to know what the government policies in that country are. Correct. So but if they are in, an, in a language that you don't understand, there's no way you can function, right? So if these documents are translated, they make your work much easier and much quicker. Then we have personal documents which include uh, your certificates, be it birth certificate, uh, death certificate, marriage certificate. Uh, it also includes your resumes and CVs. So if you are applying to jobs outside India in any country or let's say China especially because Chinese people uh, usually don't understand English, your 
bio data needs to be translated in a language that they can understand to increase your prospects of getting a better job there. Then we have uh, immigration documents, which can be visa application forms. So again, a personal example, when I had been to China to study, before that, the university that I was going to go to had sent me visa forms and all of them were in Chinese. So if somebody wants to go to China to study, but they don't have any knowledge of Chinese yet, reading the visa form is impossible, right? So having these documents translated again makes your work very easy. Then we have financial documents, which is uh, financial statements, balance sheets, ledgers, anything. And we have uh, real estate documents, which can be property contracts or agreements. So if you're planning on buying a house or a property uh, in China, these documents will need to be translated. So these are some of the areas where document translation is uh, required. And I assure you that the list is not limited to these areas. It goes beyond that and uh, it is a huge list. So moving on to videos and voiceovers. Uh, so videos and voiceovers usually go hand in hand. When I talk about videos, I'm talking about uh, transcription or subtitling. And when I talk about voiceovers, I'm talking about translating the audio, which is nothing but dubbing, right? Uh, with the advent of the fourth industrial revolution, which is going on around us right now, most of the content that we consume or let's say 80% of the uh, content that we consume is in the audio visual format, correct? So translating these audio visual contents into different languages becomes very important to reach a wider audience, right? And penetrate deeper into the market. So one very good example of this is uh, news channels. So if you want to understand what is happening anywhere in the world, you need to understand what the people there are going through, correct? So there are a lot of instances, instances where uh, on news channels, locals are interviewed, right? But it's not always that these locals do know English. So you might have seen that when these locals are interviewed, be it in India or anywhere outside India as well, the videos that, the interviews that are taken of these locals, they're either dubbed, which is voiceover, or they're subtitled, which, is, uh, which comes under video. Right, so that's just one very good example of how translating this audiovisual content uh, becomes important. Uh, let's see a few areas where uh, videos and voiceover translations uh, are required. The first and major one being film and television. Uh, no need to say the Chinese entertainment industry and the Indian entertainment industry are both booming. And India or anywhere around the world, there is a lot of scope or a lot of liking towards East Asian culture or East Asian uh, shows or East Asian movies. So translating these content into a local language, which can be English or any other language, ensures that this content reaches a wide audience and it penetrates deeper into the market. So one more uh, example I can give is Chinese people are very big fans of Amir Khan. They love watching Amir Khan movies. So when I was in China, I watched one of the Amir Khan movies, which is Dangal, which is a very famous movie of his. I watched that movie in Chinese. It, it was dubbed in Chinese and there were Chinese subtitles. So if people from China really adore this uh, person from India and his movies, for them to understand his movies, that content has to be translated. And vice versa, if we want to watch content from China, we cannot watch it in Chinese unless you know Chinese. It has to be subtitled or dubbed, right? So this is a huge area where uh, video and voiceover translation is used. Then we have e-learning or training videos. Uh, these can be used by companies or uh, educational platforms or anybody to uh, make their employees or students understand whatever uh, they're trying to make them understand, right? So uh, it can be anything. It can be uh, your tutorial videos. So for example, there is a lot, a huge market, especially in China for makeup videos, right? And people are gaining a lot of interest in makeup here as well. 
So if there is a makeup tutorial that uh, a Chinese person has made for us to understand it, it needs to be dubbed in a language that we understand or it needs to have subtitles in a language that we understand. Right. Next one is uh, corporate videos. So corporate videos are nothing but videos that companies might want their employees to watch that this can be um, this can include human resource videos or um, again, this can also include training videos. So product training or uh, any other videos that they might want their employees to watch. So if you're working in a Chinese company that a Chinese company that has an office in India and if the video is in Chinese, your employees are not going to understand what the video is correct. So having it translated in a local language will ensure that the message is sent across properly. Then we have marketing and advertising. Uh, as I've already mentioned, business is booming in all around the world with China, right? So if Chinese companies want to market their product or advertise their products in other countries, they need to have their advertisements translated. Right. If so, if you're seeing a product video, but you're not understanding what they're saying or what the product is, they're not going to have any business here. Correct. So for them to increase their market in various parts of the world, they have to uh, translate their content, be it document or audiovisual content as well. And that goes vice versa. Same for Indian or any other companies that want to uh, create a market in China. Next is YouTube and online content. Uh, YouTube is a growing uh, space where people are making videos about anything and everything, right? And these videos, if they're being made in India, they're usually in Hindi or English, right? But there are a lot of um, tutorial videos from India, be it uh, uh, a maths tutorial or a science tutorial or a language instruction video as well. These are very famous around the world and people prefer watching Indian people teach them math, right? So if this content is in Hindi or in any other local language, it is impossible for somebody else to understand it. So subtitling or dubbing these videos or any other online content becomes very important to send your message across and to create a wider audience. Then we have uh, the gaming industry. Gaming industry is also an industry that is hugely booming nowadays, and there are a lot of gamers in China and in India as well and everywhere around the world. And it has become so huge that there are now competitions, gaming competitions held on an international level where, pe where people from all around the world come in a place and they uh, compete with each other, right? But these games, if they want, if the gaming company wants to reach a wider audience and to, you know, every corner of any country, the game needs to have language options. Correct. If the entire game is in English and I only know Chinese, I'm not going to play that game because I don't understand anything. Same goes for Chinese games. So I think translating or even dubbing the voices in uh, games is also very important to um, create a great gaming atmosphere for everybody. Then we have uh, PSAs, that is public service announcements. So if you've uh, been to a railway station, you, you know that the announcements are not made in just one language. They're two languages or three languages or four languages, right? So that is important because these announcements need to be understood by everybody present there. And because of the uh, hyper globalized world today, you can find anybody anywhere. So if you're in China, you will also find that the announcements are made in Chinese and English. So voiceovers are a, a huge arena uh, for public service announcements. And this also is a separate career, right? So people with language majors also go for public service announcement jobs. Uh, then we have live events. So if live events uh, are happening, it can be a gaming event or uh, a technology event or an AI event. Or maybe, you know, when companies launch new products, they usually ha uh, hold live events. So for the live events to be watched across the world, the, uh, it can either be subtitled, live subtitled, or it can also be dubbed or it can also have a transcription. 
right? So this will make sure that this video reaches a wider audience. Then we have podcasts and audiobooks. Uh, again, this this usually is uh, only about voiceovers. So again, for uh, a greater share in the market to reach a lot of people, if podcasts and audiobooks are translated into different languages, uh, a lot more people can get access to it. Uh, then we have tourism and hospitality. Uh, so you might have noticed that regions or countries have their videos where they're promoting their tourism, right? They're promoting their country. So these videos are usually translated in different languages so that it reaches people of different countries. Sometimes uh, countries or regions also appoint certain people, famous people who are bilinguals, bilinguals or uh, multilinguals to be their brand ambassador so that they can go to different countries and promote their uh, particular region or country. So this is also a huge arena for uh, video and voiceover translations. So I'm assuring you that these are just um, a few things that I have listed in the presentation, but there are a lot more uh, arenas available for translation of documents or videos. Right. So moving on, uh, let's look at the nuances of Chinese language. So as I had previously mentioned in the beginning of the video, a good translator needs to know the nuances of the language. Because if you don't know these, you might end up mistranslating the content and sending the wrong message across. So what are nuances? Nuances are little points that every language has that makes them unique, right? So I have listed uh, five points here, but there are a lot more uh, nuances of Chinese especially. So I'll just go through these five points. Uh, so these are five points which uh, translators, especially English to Chinese and Chinese to English translators need to keep in mind while translating documents or videos or um, voiceovers, right? So the first one is uh, context based meanings. So Chinese is a very contextual language, right? So it doesn't have huge sentences. It has very small sentences, but the meaning of the sentence depends on the context. Correct. So to give you a very small example, the word for he, she and it is the same in Chinese. It's the word ha, right? But understanding whether you are talking about he, she, it depends on the context. Correct. Then one more example is cultural context. So when you learn the language of a country, it's important to also learn about the culture of the country. Correct. Because cultural contexts are uh, specific to each country, right? So to give you an example about Chinese cultural context, um, there are certain taboos in China, right? So for example, there is a thing in China where you don't give umbrellas as a gift or the word uh, the word for four and the word for death is the same. So if you're gifting someone something, you don't gift it in four numbers. It can be one, two, three or five, not four. Right. So these are little small cultural things that uh, you need to keep in mind when translating or interpreting. This is usually uh, very important to know, especially when you're translating audiovisual content and especially the uh, uh, entertainment content that is film and television. Right. So. If you translate it incorrectly, the meaning that the listener would get would be uh, different than what the film or the show would have wanted to convey, right? So that's the first point. Second is uh, one word and multiple equivalents. So this is a common complaint of uh, Chinese learners who are new Chinese learners that if I search for a word in the dictionary, I get multiple uh, words of in Chinese. So which one do I use, right? So Let's take an example of the word to know, right? So if I search to know in the dictionary, the dictionary app that I have in my phone, these are the options that I get. So you can see I cannot even count how many options I've got. So for you to know how to translate the word, 
you need to know which word is to be used in which context correct if you use the incorrect word it will send across the incorrect meaning correct so as i had also previously mentioned you need to have mastery over both languages and i mean mastery right you need to know all words that are there for that one english equivalent and you need to know which word is appropriate in which context right uh then the third point is idioms phrases and proverbs so chinese is a very idiomatic language it has a lot of idioms and one specialty of chinese is it uses four characters or four words to express an idiom or express an idiomatic expression right these are called chong yu in chinese so this is a feature that is very specific to chinese so one example that i have given here you can see it on your screen it is mama hu hu right so mama hu hu okay so if someone who doesn't know chinese or has just begun to learn chinese you know what they will translate this as so ma is horse and hu is tiger so a new learner might translate it or somebody who doesn't know the language or the culture uh, properly might translate it as horse horse tiger tiger right but that doesn't make any sense because mama hu hu when said together it means so so right okay ish that is the meaning of this idiom so if you don't know what mama hu hu together means because separately yes they mean horse and tiger but together they mean so so correct so having knowledge of these uh, uh, idioms or phrases is very important to correctly translate uh, what the original content is saying right then moving on to the next point is tenses so when you usually learn um european languages or even other asian languages tenses are a very uh, complicated part of that language but chinese is great in this regard chinese has very few and very uncomplicated sentence uh, tenses right so in english if i want to say uh, things in the future tense there are multiple ways i can say it i can say if i want to say i will go to school i can say i will go to school i will be going to school i will have gone to school i will have been going to school and further right but in chinese it's just one sentence wo hui qu xue xiao that's it okay if you want to add more uh, information in the sentence you can do that so you add different words in the sentence but the verb as it changes in english from uh, go going gone right it changes in english but in chinese it doesn't change it stays the same you just add different information in the sentence to make the tense of the uh, sentence clearer so that is also one very important point of how to correctly translate the sentence so again uh this also is based on context so you need to know what context the sentence is being said in and then you will properly understand what tense the sentence needs to be right and the final point is a uh, passive voice so english is a language which uses a lot of passive voice right so for example um tea is widely drunk around the world right that's a passive word passive sentence right the active sentence would be people around the world drink tea right that's the active sentence so this also creates confusion sometimes because chinese is a uh, is a language which rarely uses the passive voice it mostly uses active voice only so it is very important to keep in mind this difference between the language while translating so these were just a few nuances of the language that make the language unique and these are also the points that translators need to pay a lot of attention to so that the uh, content is translated correctly and that it can be interpreted correctly uh moving on so what we saw till now was what translations are uh, what areas of translations are available and what nuances translators need to pay attention to but there is one more question i want to ask you 
what are the types of translations did you know that there are types of translations what are the types types of translations can you tell me in the comments if anybody knows Okay, so I think we know that translation exists, right? We know what translation is, but we are usually unaware of the types of translations, <laughs> correct? So uh, I will pass the presentation over to Anuprita now to explain the types of translations, to talk about machine translation post editing, and to talk about talk about the advantage of human intervention in translations. Over to you, Anuprita. Thank you. Thank you, Shivani. Thanks a lot. OK, so let us begin with the types of translations. Now I'll start with a very rudimentary division as to what are the types of translations. So the first being a human translation where pure human intelligence is used to translate from one language to another. So it is, of course, uh, quite a time consuming method, but it is also a traditional way. Second is machine translations, wherein uh, a computer algorithm is used to translate a language to another. Right. So here uh, the translated sentence is integrated into the meaning according to the part of speech structure of the targeted text. And third in the type is post edited machine translations or the post edited translations. Now this is an amalgamation of both human translations and machine translations. So we will be looking into MTPA more in detail later. So moving ahead. Let us go ahead with the technicalities of machine translations. Now we all know that uh, worldwide machine translations are being used. So let's see what the types are quickly. I won't go much into the technicalities, but let us at least know what we are using. So the first one and the very basic uh, first commercial machine translation is rules based machine translation. So uh, in this, the translation relies on manually built translation lex lexicons, which can uh, to be some extent be edited. Users. A drawback of this was it gave low quality translation. Second in line is statistical machine translations, where a statistical model is used to translate texts from one language to another. So uh, if you all know NLP, this is a sub a subfield of NLP that is natural language processing. Um, the drawback of this is it is free from grammar and uh, language rules, of course. So we don't really use these two individually that much. Now the third one is neural machine translations. So when we think about machine translation, the first example which comes to our mind is Google Translate, isn't it? So the, this super famous Google Translate belongs to this type that is neural machine translations. So in this machine learning is used to translate the text to the target source. Now the NMT engines which use which are used can recognize the source and target connections using a very large data sets. So we can say that NMT can uh, fully automate very simple and repetitive translations and hence they can really assist us with monotonous translate translation segments, right? Fourth type of machine translation is hybrid machine translations where multiple machine translation approaches are used in a single translation system. So uh, the underlying purpose of this is to avoid the failure of any single technique. So no need to just rely on a single technique. So we incorporate multiple machines, multiple translations into a single translation system. Now, apart from these four, another emerging form is computer assisted translations cat. I hope you all have heard uh, about cat. So let us see what cat is. So these are software tools which are used to assist professional human translators in translating, streamlining the process. Uh, and of course, lastly, giving the very high quality output. So an important note here is uh, CAT tools do not provide fully automated translations, but they provide assistance in proofreading, building up the memory, which is very, very important. And uh, in then giving 
a sneak peek into the tiny nuances which is built over, over time due to the memory right so in terms of uh, professional translations these tools can give a very high quality output wherein the translators can maintain a very good control over the content wherein you may require domain specific terminologies or even idioms or nuances which was explained by shivani earlier right so this is what cat is and rian is one such cat tool now moving ahead yes machine translations uh, are very much a top of the town but should we completely rely on it what do you think please let me know in the chat box yeah no we cannot rely completely on machine translation so let us see what are the aspects where human intervention is required so i would like to take you all to a different arena wherein we will see the see theory let us see what it is so the picture here in, on your screen is of yan fu so he was a chinese military officer and also a newspaper editor in the 19th century and uh, what he did is that he gave a theory wherein he listed three difficulties which are commonly uh, faced by translators mostly chinese translators but i think it is universal so uh, he has stated in the preface of one of his translations named evolution and ethics the chinese name of the work is tian yan lun so the three difficulties faced by uh, translators first is faithfulness so don't go literally by the word faithfulness or shin so let's see what it is the meaning here should be taken as the consistency with the text so what is consistency with the text it is keeping the text close to the original one okay so the meaning the context should not uh, really deviate from the original one second is expressiveness or ta so the meaning here is the target text should be clear and coherent so there should be a smooth expression of the target text third is elegance don't go by the literal word the meaning here should be taken as the translated text should have a refinement of the language in terms of correct vocabulary and sentence structure so even now in the chinese academic circle these three elements are very much considered as a part of translations okay now let us see um why machine translations and human intervention together can really make a difference so do you know what is the method i'll tell you that the method is mtpe so a question to all of you here have you used machine translation and post editing let me know in the chat box if you have used please write yes if no please write no okay so let's see i think some of you haven't so let's see what mtpe is the full form of course i'll tell you again machine translation and post editing it is a very much emerging field in the area of translations so what does mtpe do so mtpe basically combines human accuracy with machine efficiency to create a very high quality output because in the end the output quality will determine how the method is working right so what is done in mtp is the machine translated text undergoes a, a quite a lot of refinement by a specialized linguist right so what are the advantages of mtp the, is that it optimizes the usage of resources so you are using the human resource you are using the machines isn't it so you are using the all the best things that these resources are offering and thus they produce a very high quality of translations now next important thing is the type of post editing so there are three types there are two main types and one is an emerging of course first comes the light post editing so let's see what light post editing is now if if uh, let me give you an example if you are going through a document and you just want to skim through it you will do a quick scan isn't it so it is similar to that 
So what happens in live post editing is that a document undergoes scanning only for significant errors such as spelling mistakes or incorrect usage of uh, terminologies, isn't it? It happens a lot of time um, where proper nouns can be misspelled, right? So this happens in live post editing and uh, coming over to full post editing. So it is an in-depth method wherein light post editing is added with many other parameters. So here the tone, the context is also preserved. And uh, of course, this is the mostly used uh, method by the professional translators in order to produce a good quality of translation, right? So to tell you all in simple words, full post editing should be as though they were written originally in the target language. So are you understanding what full post editing is? So it should be that perfect. And of course, lastly, what are the advantages of MTPA? So I personally feel it is time saving and of course cost saving, isn't it? So that's all in MTPA. Now, uh, let me take you all to Rian Cat tool. So Rian offers such kind of perfect blend of human and AI based technology in order to give a very good quality of translated text. Uh, now here in Rian Cat tool, we offer a lot of things. Let us quickly go through it. First is quick translations. Second, 100% human translations. Now what this is, you might get confused. Why am I saying human translations? Now, uh, in the past web webinar, we saw that there are many areas where you need translators, right? But also there are areas where you need 100% human translations. And that area is media. Okay, so in case you want to translate uh, uh, a dialogue in a web series, you need to have a complete human understanding. There a machine cannot work. Hence, we also have a provision for 100% human translation. Third, as we saw machine translation and post editing, that is MTP. So you combine the human accuracy and machine efficiency. Next is subtitles translations. Next is voiceovers and lastly video translations. So we offer all these things in the Rian Cat tool. And uh, this is to provide a, a good professional solutions for language experts around the world. So this CAT tool works in more than 25 plus languages. It is not just limited to Chinese or Japanese. It works for all the languages used worldwide. Now let us quickly go through a video which talks more about the Rian CAT tool. I'll take you to it. At Rian, we offer document translation and audio video localization. All through the same Rian platform. Rian's cloud-hosted platform provides Translation Management System, TMS, used for document translation and Multimedia Management System, MMS, used for media, audio and video. Rian also provides ABI and integration functionalities to customize the localization workflow. Rian has its own safe and secure portal in which clients can upload, download, and manage all their files for localization, and the service team takes care of the rest. The documents can be translated either by machine or by a linguist or in a combination of machine and linguist both. Create a project. You can also upload a glossary file that would help the translators to maintain the specific terminology during translation. Upload the SOAP file and move to the translation editor. A bilingual editor will open. You can use AI-powered engine to get the entire translation. This translation can later be edited by a linguist. You can use the Zoom translator here who will do the entire translation in the conventional movie by reading the source text and writing the translation. In the target column, various other features such as concordant memory, metadata, phonetic typing are also available. The translation or review of the file can also be assigned to a third party. Once translation is done, you can download the translated file. 
Olivia Fine, other than translation, there are two more steps involved. Subtitle generation or curation before translation and audio video mixing after translation. Limited video on audio file. Getting those subtitles using machine. Those can be curated using a subtitle editor. Same curated text can be taken ahead for doing translation with subtitles. The editor is the same as document translation editor. After translation, the translated text can be recorded in a or a digital voice, one by one for each segment. With the young, you can not only translate the text, but record your voice or interpret the digital voice for the same. This unique feature makes the young use of the solution for all your content localization needs. Voice recording is one of the years before the young users set up. It does not require any fancy gadgets. For the voice recording, you can create your own phonetic log thing that will contain the natural voice text and its pronunciation text. The recording language is not phonetic. With the help of phonetic log thing, the recording will be done in the last few years. Much log thing will have to maintain consistency in the pronunciation across the file. It will be a new feature that helps in pleasing accuracy and efficiency tremendously. And Vian has five maidens for the same. Now, Vian watch is recording of all the segments. The audio file can be further edited for what you know. At Vian, we recording, you can create your own phonetic glossary that will contain the actual word text and its pronunciation text. This is useful when the target language is not phonetic. With the help of phonetic glossary, the recording is done exactly the way you want. Such glossary will help to maintain consistency in the pronunciation across the file. Many of these are unique features that help increasing accuracy and efficiency tremendously and Rian has filed patents for the same. Now, Rian merges recordings of all the segments. The audio file can be further edited for volume normalization, noise removal, background music mixing on the media editor. Rian will then combine the target recording, target text with the source visuals using a single click. The final mixed video file can be downloaded now. At Rian, we offer you the power to strategize and grow businesses while we take on the challenge to create digital assets for them in the languages that your customers understand. While you work on the strategies to expand, we work on your digital content to localize it through our platform, Vian. Yeah, so five takeaways from this presentation. The first being Chinese language industry offers a wide range of areas for translations. Second takeaway is platforms like Rian can help you with tiny nuances, which was explained very well by Shivani. Thirdly, there are four types of machine translations. First, rules-based, second, statistical, neural, and lastly, hybrid. Fourth takeaway is that the emerging MTP combines human accuracy with machine efficiency to give a very high quality output, right? And a last takeaway, so one, uh, one of these from our studies is that MTP can make you 350%, 350% more productive. So definitely you must give it a try. So that's all on my part. Now uh, I would hand it over to Nishant. So thank you, Anuprita. Thank you, Shivani, for this amazing session. Um, and I'm sure there is a lot of takeaways for people to uh, you know, really extract from the session more than what we've listed on the slides. And like we promised to all our attendees today, we will be offering you a complimentary access for two weeks to the Rian platform of uh, the freelancer version of it. Uh, you can try your hand. You can uh, you can just maybe upload a few documents, translate them in a language of your choice um, and feel free to use it as much as uh, you know you find time and you find convenience. So we will be reaching out to you. We have the uh, we have your contact points uh, since you registered for the webinar and you've attended it. 
so stay tuned. You probably will receive a communication. If you don't, uh, we, you can reach out to us uh, through sales at rian.io and we will be more than happy to take a look at what went wrong. So uh, if there are any questions for the panelists, I, I would be more than happy to take them now. In case you feel you want to share questions uh, offline, I would be uh, you could do that at sales at rian.io. I will leave the email ID in the chat box. Uh, but yes, I we are also open for questions now. Questions, comments, feedback, insights, anything that you feel is. So there's a question, does Rian have native linguist? Yes, indeed. We offer localization solutions and services in close to 60 languages, and we have native linguists for most of the languages, which include international languages. Yes, Samruddhi, you can share your details by going to the website and uh, you can either click on in the vendor tab there or you can just send uh, maybe an email to sales at and we can do the needful. Super, so. Uh, Yes, Harshit San, thank you so much for staying with us. Uh, we learned a quite quite a few things today as well. So uh, we will continue to host such sessions in the in the future as well, and we hope uh, they will you you will be a part of that. Uh, we will continue to upgrade the the deliverables. You know, while diving deeper into the topic and see how, how we can bring out more value. That being said, uh, feel free to reach out uh, through sales at rian.io and we will be more than happy to come back to you with answers to your queries or any suggestions and any feedback to implement them as well. All right, so let's call it a wrap then, folks. Thank you for being on the on the session and we really appreciate your time. Uh, I hope uh, you will take away a lot from these sessions and uh, look forward to connecting with you again. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you.